Methylene Blue is a very interesting supplement. Now, I've been taking this for quite some time now, uh, mostly for the purposes of memory, focus, concentration, and I must say it works extremely well. I feel I have more energy, uh, there's certainly a slight mood elevation, and I just get a lot more things done. It also has, of course, uh, preventive aspects. It improves mitochondrial health, and I keep talking about how important mitochondria are for our overall health. And Methylene Blue is one of the supplements or medications, however you look at it, that can tremendously improve the health of our mitochondria. And because of this and a few other functions that it has, it may actually even prevent and treat Alzheimer's disease. And this is really a bold statement, but there's a lot of literature here and I think it's really fascinating. Now, it may be the first supplement or medication again that can actually reverse dementia. So at this point, you know, we had some medications for quite some time that weren't very good. Nothing really has stopped or reversed Alzheimer's disease, but methylene blue, interestingly a compound that has been around since 1876, has shown in even low oral doses, the doses that most um, companies are experimenting with, around 15 milligrams a day orally, which is not a huge dose, but it has shown tremendous benefit here, right? Now, Alzheimer's disease, um, of course, is a very um, sad and very progressive um, disease that all of us are probably worried about. You know, I certainly have relatives that have suffered from Alzheimer's disease. I think it's terrible, you know, you lose the person, you know, or what the person was, you know, because what we are essentially is our memories, our emotions, our experiences. And when that goes, when we have Alzheimer's disease or another type of dementia, um, that part is gone and the person changes. And this is extremely sad to see. So Alzheimer's disease is, of course, characterized by cognitive problems including memory, focus, concentration, as well as sometimes psychiatric conditions, right? And uh, <clears throat> this is the result of the formation of amyloid plaques via accumulation of amyloid beta peptides, so short uh, chains of amino acids, small, very small uh, proteins, and intercellular neurofibrillary tangles. And uh, this ultimately leads to death of neurons and the shrinking of the brain. And it is generally a progressive disease that ultimately leads to inability to perform even simple tasks of daily living and in the more advanced stages can lead to a sort of vegetative state and even death. Now, when I worked in geriatrics about 15 years ago, we used medications like Namenda and Aricept, um, sometimes uh, vitamin E in high concentrations, and we gave this out like candy, hoping that this would help. Of course, these were heavily advertised by the pharmaceutical industry. But in my experience, I did not really see much change there. You know, it's always difficult to compare because you're looking at an individual patient, how they behave. But then the people that I've treated and they were on all the correct doses of Namenda, Aricept and so on, I did not see uh, much of a change here at all, unfortunately. So this was very frustrating, obviously. Now, methylene blue has been around, as I mentioned, since 1876. It's this uh, bright blue heterocyclic aromatic compound and it was first used as an industrial dye and as a uh, laboratory stain. And also was our first antibiotic and we used this to treat malaria amongst other things. It's been shown to have some efficacy there, right? But even today it's used clinically um, in the emergency room mostly to treat things like cyanide poisoning, uh, carbon monoxide poisoning, sometimes even urinary tract infections. So it is an antibiotic, it has an antiviral property, uh, it is a very interesting compound. And again, this, these are the indications we use it for today. In the emergency room, we use it intravenously, um, but again, it can be used orally because it has an extremely high oral bioavailability. So a lot of it gets in. It's about 90%. That's unheard of. I mean, most things that you give orally will have 20%, 30% at best. So this is pretty high. So this bright blue compound has shown very positive effects on cognitive performance in Alzheimer's disease patients. And I was excited to read that it may also be useful in the treatment and possibly reversal of Alzheimer's disease. And that's really uh, what's so amazing about it, right? Now, there was a 2014 study that was published in Neurobiology and that tested methylene blue at three milligrams per kilogram, so fairly high dose, in transgenic mice uh, that had an overproduction of human amyloid peptides with cerebral amyloid, amyloid doses. So in other words, these were mice that were genetically engineered to develop a human form of Alzheimer's disease. So they had the gene now that uh, uh, people have as well that led ultimately to development of Alzheimer's disease. And of course, in the mouse model, we can induce this much earlier. There's a short lifespan and we can uh, make sure that we have a, a clinical presentation that is really very close to what we see in, in humans, right? And this is very helpful in the research. There's some differences, of course, between species, but to do this research at this level, I think this is probably the right way to go here, these models, right? 
And the researchers found that methylene blue caused profound improvement in cognitive function and cerebral amyloid pathology, so in both. So one, they performed better, but also, again, they had less of this amyloid plaque burden in their brain after treatment with uh, methylene blue for about three months. So um, their memory was better, problem solving was better, they were more active, and the you know, so this clinical improvement was reflected by a decrease in plaques and tangles in their brains, which they ultimately looked at, of course. And the authors write that, in conclusion, our data demonstrate that long-term oral methylene blue treatment in aged Alzheimer's uh, mice for three months remediates behavioral impairment while concomitantly ameliorating cerebral amyloidosis by modulating beta-secretase. That's a complicated sentence. Beta-secretase is an enzyme that's needed in the formation of amyloid beta. That's amyloid beta is the protein leading to these plaques, right? These peptides are uh, formed through the breakdown of larger proteins. They're known as amyloid beta precursors. So methylene blue seems to inhibit or block beta-secretase, which is needed for these amyloid beta peptides to form. So it kind of stops uh, the supply of these peptides to form the plaques. And this stops and possibly reverses the formation of plaques and tangles in the brain. The authors further write that methylene blue has very low toxicity, which we know, low molecular mass, it is highly water soluble, and that's actually very important. It has high bioavailability, about 90% on oral dosing, right? And the ability to cross the blood brain barrier. And it is already approved, of course, for use in the clinic. We've used it for quite some time, right? If cerebral amyloid pathology in this transgenic mouse model mirrors the clinical syndrome, then long-term methylene blue therapy could be a safe and promising disease-modifying therapy to advance Alzheimer's disease with no discernible side effects. So, of course, there are some side effects. I think it's a bit of, bit of a bold statement, but they're usually very mild. Um, most people can take it. The contraindications are very small. Things like, of course, uh, pregnancy or breastfeeding are contraindicated. People on higher doses of a um, antidepressant, like an SSRI, like Prozac. However, in these doses, we're talking about 50 milligrams a day. Personally, I would not see any issues here. Of course, you have to talk to your doctor or pharmacist prior to taking this, right? Now, this is, of course, an animal study, as I mentioned, but I think it's extremely promising as the Physiology, a lot of the physiology at least is preserved across species here, right? Now, methane blue also increases the production of heme, it delays cellular senescence, and it can induce mitochondrial respiratory complex. And that sounds very complicated, but this is something to help us understand why it has these positive effects in the mitochondria. And as I mentioned before, mitochondrial health is extremely important to our overall health, right? A decline in complex four, this is one of the proteins in the respiratory uh, transport chain activity, causes cytotoxicity, increased production of oxidants, and decreases the energy production in mitochondria. Now, methylene blue can increase complex four, thereby greatly improving mitochondrial function and health. So it can really improve the way that the mitochondria are making their energy. The energy, again, in the mitochondria is usually in the form of ATP. Most uh, of this is generated through the citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle, where we take a sugar molecule and then make a lot of ATP, right? But there are a lot of issues uh, afterwards. So when you take the sugar and break it down, ultimately uh, the electron transport chain needs to be supplied by some of these molecules, some of these molecules made in the citric acid cycle. And what they do there is they transport these electrons in these between these membranes. And these electrons, as they, you know, um, they allow uh, ultimately the production of ATP. And so it's important that this electron transport chain is functional so we can make energy and that the cell is healthy, right? In a 2019 review in molecular neurobiology, the authors looked at the impact of methylene blue on a variety of neurodegenerative conditions that include Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, stroke, and traumatic brain injury. And they wrote that mitochondrial dysfunction and oxidative stress is key to the progressive debilitating nature of these conditions. So here, as in many diseases, as we talked about in other videos, in, in cancer or in autoimmune conditions and so on, diabetes, um, the mitochondrial dysfunction is at the root of the problem as it is in the brain. We always think of um, Alzheimer's disease as type three diabetes because the cells there have a similar problem, right? There is this uh, a glucose, uh, this impaired glucose tolerance, right? And uh, that ultimately leads to dysfunction in the mitochondria. These mitochondria are becoming sick. They can't work very well. That means they produce a lot of free radicals and this causes damage in not only the mitochondria, but in the entire cell that ultimately leads to a state of disease. So when we can address mitochondrial health early on, um, then we can really 
prevent or reverse some of these conditions, right? The authors also find that regardless of the route of administration, again, oral administration is very high here, right? Methane blue accumulates in significant concentrations in various tissues, so it goes all over your body, with brain tissue concentration of methylene blue as much as tenfold higher than serum levels as early as one hour after IV administration. But remember, it doesn't have to be IV, that's what they talk about here, but it can be oral as well. And that's really fascinating. It seems to predominantly be attracted to the brain, which is, I think, a very good thing, because that's what we need a lot of it, right? Our energy in the production of the brain is absolutely essential, is one of the places with the highest energy production, and we need this uh, to work extremely well. And again, if the mitochondria in these cells and the neurons are not functioning very well, then we can get issues like dementia. There's a cascade that's set in motion that can lead to, to conditions like dementia of Alzheimer's type or Parkinson's disease. So this is a very interesting uh, uh, finding that methylene blue can help these cells, especially the cells in the brain. It gets in there, it crosses the blood-brain barrier, and it tremendously helps the health of those mitochondria, right? One of the ways in which methylene blue can improve neurocognitive problems is by improving the health it, it, through the optimization of this electron transport chain, so allowing it to work better, more fluidly, right? So it's helping the electrons again in the uh, particular proteins in the transport chain, which might not be working well or might be blocked by some condition, uh, to operate better. So therefore, greatly improves the ability of the mitochondria to produce ATP. Furthermore, methylene blue neutralizes free radicals that are formed during energy production. That's another positive thing that it does. So one that helps with the energy production itself, it helps or allows the mitochondria to produce energy again if there's a blockage somewhere. But also when we produce energy in a mitochondria, there always are oxidative species. So there always are oxidative stressors that are produced, uh, radical oxygen species. These are damaging molecules. And we can't really prevent the production of those. Interestingly, so um, as an aside, if you're following a ketogenic diet, and I'm not promoting it, I'm not currently on it, but I, I used to be on there, and I think intermittently it's, it's a very good thing. For some people, it works long-term as well. But if you are using ketone bodies in your energy production rather than glucose, which most of us do that eat carbohydrates predominantly, you produce less free radicals, right? It's actually a different mechanism in which we make energy there. But in a normal uh, metabolism, we produce a lot of these radical oxygen species. They're very damaging and methylene blue can neutralize those. So that's the second thing it does. It optimizes how we make energy and it mops up the junk that's produced there. So it really neutralizes that, right? Um, and again, these steps greatly improve the health and longevity of the mitochondria. And that, again, as we know, is greatly linked to overall health and longevity. Now, talking specifically about methylene blue's effect on Alzheimer's disease in this paper, the authors write that work done in transgenic mice has found that methylene blue supported proteolytic clearance of amyloid beta by increasing chymotrypsin and trypsin-like proteosomes activity in the brain. So here they talk about a slightly different mechanism, but they talk about the clearance of these amyloid beta particles. So once they're produced, not only does methylene blue uh, prevent the production of them, but those that are there already, it can help to break them down apparently. So that's another thing that was found. Again, transgenic mice, we always have to take this with a grain of salt, but it's a great model. And again, the physiology is uh, pretty much, uh, you know, preserved to a certain extent, but also these are transgenic mice. So they have a human form of dementia. So they really made sure that the disease process is very similar. And then, of course, we have a better uh, comparison also when we are looking at treatments, like, for example, with methylene blue in this case, right? They further state here, decreased the position of amyloid beta in the hippocampus and neighboring cortex was observed in another transgenic mouse model. And these observations were supported by the commensurate protection against cognitive decline in behavioral tasks, measuring social interaction, learning, and memory, and exploratory activity. So they tested these mice and they did a lot better in all those activities, right? And talking about another study, similar results were reported on the transgenic mouse, wherein the anti-amyloidogenic mechanism was determined to be related to attenuation of beta secretase activity and expression. So the authors point out that in the early occurrence of Alzheimer's disease, so before clinical symptoms are present really, or before we have a significant amount of plaque that's deposited in the brain, respiratory chain activity in the mitochondria is hampered and uh, specifically so at complex three and four. These are proteins in the electron transport chain. And this leads to decreased energy metabolism in those regions of the brain. So it starts sort of with a blockage of optimal working of the electron transport chain. That's how 
the process of dementia of Alzheimer's type begins, as these authors point out here, right? Soluble amyloid beta is then known to colonize in the mitochondria and is important by the mitochondrial import complex. In other words, energy production in the mitochondria is slowed or blocked, right? And this allows the plaque formation process to begin in the first place. So methylene blue's positive effects on the respiratory chain in the mitochondria can greatly improve mitochondrial health, like preventing the chain of events that ultimately leads to plaque formation, neurofibrillary tangles, and symptoms of dementia. So I thought it was fascinating. Again, we're talking mostly about mouse models here because we can really follow a mouse through, through its entire lifespan. We can, of course, dissect mice and look at their brains. And I think this gives us excellent data on how methylene blue is thought to work. But then keep in mind, methylene blue has been used in uh, populations of people with Alzheimer's disease, mild or moderate, and they had very positive effects on this as well. It's just much more profound when we can look at really uh, brains and we can, we can dissect the brains and really see what the differences are uh, compared to control groups who also had dementia, right, and who did not improve. Now, I'm going to point out here that there is, <clears throat> besides method in blue, and I mentioned earlier, the dose that's commonly used now by most manufacturers, and that's kind of um, at least advertised, because remember, this is a supplement, you don't need a prescription for this yet, right, um, is usually 15 milligrams per day around there that is thought to be very helpful. And it's of course rough if you, you have to adjust, of course, for body weight and all these things. But as a rough guide, around 50 milligrams per day orally is what's used um, that is thought to have these effects that can help to prevent the beginning stages of dementia, that can prevent the formation of these plaques and tangles. It might improve also um, some of these existing plaques and tangles in people that already have early stages of dementia. I think Method in Blue in the meantime, I think is a very good uh, supplement slash medication to use in the prevention and possibly treatment of Alzheimer's disease. Now, there is, of course, you know, a group of people that should not take this. So again, none of this is medical advice. You should always ask your doctor in this case specifically, because I would consider this a medication. There are real contraindications. <clears throat> Definitely pregnancy and breastfeeding are absolutely contraindicated. If you're taking um, an antidepressant, again, talk to your uh, doctor who's prescribing that antidepressant if they hopefully know what methylene blue is. I think in these doses, again, I don't have a lot of worry about that we're going to trigger serotonin syndrome. The reason they're saying this here about methylene blue, so if you took this in a high concentration and you're on an uh, antidepressant, a selective serotonin uh, reuptake inhibitor, is that methylene blue is a monoamine oxidase inhibitor and, and it potentially can trigger serotonin syndrome if you take it with too many other serotonin blocking medications. Again, at these doses, we're talking about 50 milligrams here. I am not very concerned about this. Another issue can be if you have a G6PD deficiency. I talked about this in other videos. That's a glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. If you give it intravenously in high amounts, methemoglobinemia can occur. Keep in mind, though, this is a hormetic drug. In low amounts, it actually treats that exact condition. It doesn't cause it, but treats it. I would strongly argue that 50 milligrams is a very low dose. Okay, we're way below... Uh, the allowed doses of uh, about you know two to four milligrams per kilogram at the at the higher end, which we give intravenously. So I'm not so concerned about those. But again, yes, pregnancy breast breastfeeding absolutely contraindicated. <clears throat> it does raise your blood pressure. One caveat I would say here is, I took it once uh, before a workout. That was a bad idea. I had definitely had a higher blood pressure, higher heart rate. Didn't feel good. If you're suffering from high blood pressure, another conversation with your primary care doctor. This certainly can bump that up. Also measure your own blood pressure. Don't take it before workout. I would say two hours before, one hour after should be okay. Um, and again, you don't have to have a very high dose. These 50 milligrams, that's on the high end. I never take more than that. That's the dose that I'm on currently. Um, there are days when I skip, like usually one day a week, I don't take it at all. There are a couple of days sometimes where I take half that dose. I don't think you need to go higher than this. Remember when you go much higher, over 30 milligrams per day, it can actually disrupt the gut microbiome because it is an antibiotic and it can possibly negatively interfere with some of the good bacteria we have in our gut, right? That was a very long aside. But anyway, I think it's exciting data. I am very pleased to see that this research has been done, and this was actually even a while ago. Yes, a lot of this is in these genetically altered mice, but I think we have good data here that can apply to humans. Um, I think if you have a loved one suffering from this, have them talk to the doctor, discuss this. Uh, preventively, all of us, I mean, I'm over 50, I'm concerned uh, very much about uh, dementia. I think this is a very horrible disease. Again, I've treated this like, you know, 15 years ago. It was very frustrating. Um, 
And I think this might be a very good um, supplement slash medication to address this issue and hopefully prevent us from going down the road of getting dementia. So if you found this informative, please um, subscribe and leave a question or comment. I definitely read those. They usually give me ideas for future videos. I'm particularly interested here in uh, anyone taking this for the purpose of preventing or treating dementia.